Internet, how you doing? John here. Pull up your chair and let's get back to Disco Elysium. Now, last time we began to explore the coast and got wrapped up in a few side quests along the way. No luck finding Ruby, but we did narrow down places where she might be. Today we resume the hunt, with a few detours while we're back downtown. Off camera, I went back and clicked on the billboard of the Feld building, which I missed before. I wrote that off as more background info, but actually there's a nearly impossible shivers check where you listen to the wind. Since it's a point of interest in your journal, I'm guessing it's potentially part of your search somehow. We also need to deliver the news about the dead man we found last time, as well as check the rest of Morale's traps. All this and more tonight. But first, since we're here, I wanted to try passing that empathy check with Kuno. The ledger and the pinball jacket give us bonuses, should be just enough. Fuck, does Kuno care? Well, he's a meth addicted little monster, but maybe we can peel back some of that to see what's really going on. Huh. Empathy says it's Kuno S, not him. She's somehow the worst of the two, like she's afraid of us. And not for the usual reasons one would be wary around the police. Something's up with her, the way she acts like a cornered animal. Kuno doesn't hide from us. She does. We need a way to separate them. Empathy says to watch closely. Rhetoric can see it. She's trying to make us uncomfortable. We're pitting his instincts against each other. He won't talk unless he thinks he's in control. Empathy wasn't wrong. He genuinely seems scared of her. And she's getting more and more nervous of us talking. She knows. He manages to assert himself for the moment. Let's find out what the hell's going on here. He says she killed someone, which is a hell of a claim. But this isn't some childish boast, he actually seems unsettled by this. 488 must mean something else, it's not a criminal code. But now he's trying to up the stakes, acting like she might have killed a police officer. This feels like exaggeration, unless she's packing a pistol under that coat. Logic takes this a little further. Overpowering a cop is one thing, but a vulnerable adult, or worse, another child? Suddenly not so far-fetched. Half-Light senses her fear. The text calls her the creature. Kuno sure doesn't sound like his usual self. He can't look at us when he says she might have killed a kid. He's never had that trouble before. I doubt she's got anything to do with the mercenary, but just to be thorough. Like everything in this game, you get points for asking. The mention of cat burning, while morbid, is instructive. Kids can be vicious and cruel, but he seems convinced Kuno S is genuinely unstable. Rhetoric says it's stuff even he doesn't want to think about. I shudder to imagine what it would take for a 12-year-old delinquent junkie to break character and say, To the police, I remind you. For real though, that bitch is fucking nuts. Encyclopedia thinks her language comes from a whole other Isola. Doesn't seem that important right now, though I think we can assume her family isn't in the picture for some reason. Of course, they're not related. As he tells it, she just showed up one night dripping wet and huddled in the hallway. VC recognizes the place. Cape Side Apartments, where we're headed after this. She just sat there for three days, still there every time he left. Endurance recognizes this. Revulsion shock. A kind of extreme mental shutdown. The kind that happens when someone kills. Makes them look for someplace quiet and dark. This doesn't prove it's murder, but it's more and more likely that Kuno's little friend did something very, very bad. In any case, one day she somehow got in and was just under his desk, hiding. His dad didn't care. Didn't even seem to know. That sure throws up a few red flags. He doesn't even know her name. Kuno S is just because they look alike. 
I think we've established how he's dealing with it. Doing speed and throwing rocks at dead bodies. Look, I didn't like this punk from the start, and time hasn't changed that much, but... I'm starting to see where he's coming from, and it ain't a happy place. And as scary as she is, and as much as he's probably acting up because of her, she's still a friend of a sort. Half-Light says he means it. He'll run his mouth to save face, but he'll get violent for her. Easy, man. I get it. You hold on to whoever you've got. And that seems to be a turning point in this strange relationship of ours. We showed the little man some respect, and just like with the bear fridge, he's willing to return the favor. With drugs. Just warms the heart, doesn't it? Something about him saying illegal narcotics is kind of quaintly amusing. Like some straight-laced suburban parents warning little Timmy not to do the drugs. He says that he and his dad have a line on some drug dealing, but they're not really on speaking terms right now. He's trying to bait me into getting a stash for him, and I'm gonna guess this is less about quote-unquote junkies clawing at his door, and more about addiction clawing at his brain. Don't do speed, kids. It fucks you up. Complicating things is the description of his dad as some kind of roided-up rage monster, which he almost seems proud of. If you want the speed, and to be clear, I'm doing this to get it away from Kuno, then we're gonna have to go through his dad. Yeah, look, I'm a habitual fuck-up in a city that stopped giving a shit 50 years ago, but the last thing this kid needs is more lightning in a bottle. Fortunately, he still thinks we're going in guns blazing, even though we just told him we're not. Oh, we'll have your shit, little buddy. Kim, naturally, is not a fan of any of this. Don't sweat it, partner. I prefer my vices over the counter. The spirits are a special case. I haven't forgotten about those, and I'm a little terrified where that might be going. Right, we leveled up from all that. Let's spend a point here. And... Oh yeah! I'm better at guns now. For, like, the five minutes or whatever I'll actually have a firearm. Alright, let's hustle. I gotta say, though, that whole thing with Kuno, it fits the rest of this game's major characters, in that they are the way they are for complex, often idiosyncratic reasons. Like, obviously Kuno had some home problems, but to actually learn how little his dad cares about him, and his only friend is even more fucked up than he is, it doesn't excuse him being a vulgar little meth gremlin, but you can track how an otherwise normal kid would end up this way. And it doesn't preclude him having redeeming qualities, being protective of his only friend, but also willing to talk honestly about her. Give me a moment. Just stop and ask for directions here. Kuno's place is by the bathroom, Billy's is up on the balcony. Notice she's familiar with the husband, Victor, apparently. But yeah, I keep bringing this up, but this game does an excellent job with its characters, such that even the people I don't like, I can still generally see the human in them. That's a major accomplishment for the writing. Well, here's Kuno's dad's place. Mr. De Reuter? Reuter? I'm going with Reuter. Looks like he's behind on his bills. No answer. Maybe he's not here? It reads like it's chained up, but not like the other apartment. More like the chain's helping hold the door up, which doesn't make a lot of sense from the outside. I think they just didn't want a separate tool for this. Anyway. Easy cut. Let's do this. Half-Light is oiled up, ready for a fight. While I doubt Mr. De Reuter is a pleasant fellow, I suspect Kuno has somewhat oversold the danger here. Knock, knock. Police. We're here for the drugs. The 12-year-old told us to do this. We're the good guys, allegedly. Homework with Kuno's real name on it, dated two years ago. Aha, uh -huh, there's our speed bottle. Do you take speed with a straw? I don't actually know my drugs that well. Kim is more concerned with what sounds like snoring in the next room. I'll just take this, thank you. Fucking... No, we're not blasting it for a guy we literally caught napping. Half-Light's been hanging out with that electrochemistry kid too long. That boy's trouble. 
You wake there, buddy. Nasty in here. Get the feeling our man's not big on hygiene. Now Inland Empire's freaking out. I should have broken into a weed dealer's place. Granted, this dude's sounding like a very unpleasant animal under these sheets. But I don't think he's going to be lunging at anybody. Yeah, this guy's down for the count. Whatever he drank, or took, he looks like he'd struggled to lift the blanket. It's definitely Kuno's dad, though. I note that Kuno didn't say a word about his mom. I think we can safely read between the lines there. For whatever reason, she's been gone for a while. I don't know that Kuno ever said his dad beats him, but again, I think it can reasonably be inferred. He doesn't look like he's waking up anytime soon. If not for the breathing, he wouldn't even look alive. Oop, speak of the wino. You know, I was in your shoes not too long ago. Start with some words, buddy. What do you got for us? Perception can tell his tongue is practically dead in his mouth. You'd think he shot himself up with horse tranquilizers. Then, we have a breakthrough. Pigs. So he is conscious, barely. And he's out like a light again. Christ, what do we even do with this guy? I guess there's nothing to do, really. We're not here on official business. No money to bring him to a hospital. Kim thinks even the free clinic would send him packing. Like our station's doctor said on the radio, there's only so much you can do for someone trying to destroy themselves. Forget it. We're done here. Can't help everyone. Besides, he needed help years ago, when it might have mattered. Well, that's one dose of speed Kuno won't be getting. Although I'm not sure what I can do with it. Give it to Kim? Toss it somewhere? I'm not sure the quest is finished until I actually talk to Kuno. We'll see. Right, now for the other depressing task for today. Sorry folks, I'm trying to keep it light, but this game is noir at heart. Happy endings are hard to find. Someone's cooking something. She must be at home. Volition's keeping us together. You'll notice that was a harder check. You want the points for this ad quest? You gotta endure this ad quest. We take a moment to huddle up, go over what we know. This is not the kind of thing you want to make mistakes over. All we can really do is stick to the facts. Although he's got one piece of advice for us. Don't say you know how they feel. He's right. We don't. Alright. Shit factory, second shift. Let's do this. Hello? Who is it? The police? A moment, please. Give us a moment. Come in. The door is open. Here we go. Gotta do the obligatory look around first. Red Astra cigarettes, the same we found by Victor's body. Well, I wouldn't call this fancy living. The apartments on the second floor at least have their own bathrooms and kitchens. This is very much a working class family, however. Kids room. You'll notice there's nothing to loot in here, like there wasn't around the body. That would seem a bit crass, even for Hobo Cop. Well, no more putting it off. It's you, from the book stand. I don't think I introduced myself properly. I'm Billy. Would you like something to drink? Tea, lemonade, or out of coffee? Oh, shit. It's her. The woman I thought was a red herring from the bookstore. Her husband really was missing.
She senses it's about Victor, so bad news about him is entirely unprecedented, not that it makes her job easier. Suggestion, of all our skills, says to just be direct. At least it's an almost guaranteed empathy role, thanks mostly to Kim. There's no good way to deliver bad news, only less painful ways. No pats on the back, no kudos, no job well dones. It's an awful thing to give and even worse to receive, and the best we can do is be professional about it. Professional and human. He was just here. Alive. There's a sharp contrast to this scene versus the core investigation. You have this increasingly convoluted murder case with the protagonist allowed to be zany, sad, racist, professional. On the other hand, this is a sober depiction of a tragic accident with the official follow-up. The worst you can do is flub the responsibility, but regardless of player input, Harry clearly understands the gravity of the situation. Yeah, if we tell her he was out there for two days, she'll agonize over everything she did for that time, regardless of whether it would have mattered. Reaction speed suggests giving Kim's handkerchief. Here you go, miss. It hurts her to breathe, trying to think of what to tell her daughters. And we think our part of this is hard. Empathy thinks she needs a day to process it before telling them. That seems wise. Kim's prepared for this. Can only wonder how many times he's had to say this. I'm sorry, ma'am. Take care. You did well. Thanks, Kim. That was... not easy to play through. Like he says, can't save the whole world. Well, nothing else we can do now. Time to get back to it. Let's go. Well, I think we've explored just about every personal drama we're going to find in the apartments. And other than the doomed commercial area, I think we've hit just about every major side event in downtown. Some minor loose ends, but all of our attention right now is back out on the peninsula. We'll hang on to the speed, ignore Kuno for now, and get back to the search. Still a fair bit of ground to cover. It's interesting viewing this game in 2020 as opposed to 2019 when it came out. As I've said before, the writing is broadly critical of several ideologies and serves more as a window into how people think. But the stances it takes on policing are more consistent, and for now at least, more relevant considering police brutality in the United States. Whether you're in favor of abolition, reform, or, like me, think the solution will involve a lot of low-level bureaucratic changes that don't neatly translate into slogans, the writing, especially for the thoughts, both outlines a platonic ideal for policing, the RCM answers to a higher authority, mostly issues fines, strictly controls use of guns, and acknowledges the factors outside that ideal. Private firearms ownership, drug legalization, economics, jurisdictional infighting. Ah, one of Morel's traps. Just gonna stop here. Mr. Tolly, non-imaginary phasmid. Did you clean your plate here? I suspect that Shivers check is to signal its tie to the billboard, a way of saying this is how you improve your chances.
Of course, nothing in this one either. Ah, there's that smile again. Race you to the next one. Booze arrest to talk to the next set of delinquent kids. Anyway, my point before was the game seems to be staking out what a better, more humane policing system might look like, but also admits that by itself won't fix problems in human nature, and may not even guarantee a better world. Harry himself is proof that any mechanism of law enforcement might attract or produce failures. It might be a closet fascist, or racist, or it might be an otherwise good person who suffers the steady erosion of a stressful job. That said, something better is still possible, and is worth seeking on its own. That's just my read on it, though. Feel free to hash it out in the comments, for the five of you actually watching this. Someone's playing music. Doesn't sound like it's coming from the church, though. Doesn't look in much better shape than the other buildings. Not much light. Well, let's see who's home. Place is locked up tight. And it doesn't look like the lock was originally part of the door. Interesting. Well, you don't know till you try. It's a bit obvious for a hiding place, I admit, but we might as well check it out. If she's working on some radio device, she needs somewhere to hide the equipment. The padlock's holding the doors together directly. Someone screwed in a big staple for the lock at some point. If we need to cut it open, the staple's the easier target. Interfacing's curious about the sticker, though. Some kind of smiley face with X's for eyes. What could this be doing here? This man is petrified of having to deal with kids. He's probably not wrong. This is probably related to whoever's playing the music. Let's see if we can get this thing off. Ah, damn it. No sticker for me. Not even sure what that'd do, really. Yeah, it can't be that important. Anything else here? Huh. One end of the staple was screwed in, the other nailed. Maybe whoever put the sticker here also installed the lock. Poorly. Might be easier to just pry it open. But let's not break the door open on a church unless we absolutely have to. There's something going on here. Let's look into whoever's playing that music. They might have some answers for us. Kim is really hung up on junior delinquency. Mark my words, there's a story with this guy and kids. Pack of teens probably gave him shit on his first day or something. Hmm, there's a tent across the way. Ooh, and a ton of containers. Nice. The fuck? They have a drawbridge? Well, now what do we do? It's not looting, I mean. I'm gonna keep doing that. Yes! Surrender all that you contain! Damn, but there's a bit of money in these. And pills, apparently. Okay, for real, though. Who leaves 2-6... Oh, forgot up there. Who leaves 260 in a fence post out on the ice? You kids need money, Jesus. Yeah, if you weren't keeping track, I just picked up like seven bucks worth of loose change. You can get a Panzerati for that kind of money. In my day, we didn't leave paper money lying around. We might have snorted cocaine with it, but we didn't just throw it away. Gotta be a way around the bridge. Looks like Land's Ends to the north, and a solid path around behind the church. That'll do. Ah, this must be the bunker. 250 in the bushes, and now you're just fucking with me. Now I can get breadsticks and a two-liter with that Panzerati. God damn, I'm getting hungry. How far along am I, anyway? Oh, fuck me, not even halfway. Alright, attention, me in the future, this is you in the past. Yes, I'm talking to you now, which is me. L look, not important, just... From now on, we eat before we do this. Pass it on to future me, okay? 
Anyway, something, something, old army bunker can't get in. I think it's like the container at the docks. You need to really go hard on that skill in order to even have a chance. Probably not her hideout. Almost certainly not where the shot came from. Let's keep moving. New shirt, nice. I'm fine with what I got, though. Need the logic bonus more than rhetoric. Nothing on the ice. You can see Victor's body is already gone. Aha, uh -huh, trap number three up here. Any phasmids in this one? Another shivers check. Yeah, I think there's one on every trap. There are not, however, any phasmids, insulindian or otherwise. Sorry, Cam. I'll buy you a coffee after all this. As soon as I find out where Clause is getting it. Right. Let's see what's on the very end of the peninsula. Just some cigarette butts. Someone did have a campfire here, but not recently. Nothing over here. Now what's the story with this tower? Ah, it's the radio tower. Apparently still works, though. Just barely. VC compiles the details. This must be B double prime, the 3% shot. Someone was here at some point, but our sniper? Assuming they even exist? Kim has his doubts, and it's easy to see why. The window is some 1.2 kilometers away, barely visible from here. VC also has a touch of voyeur to it. Even at a distance, Clause A affects our thoughts. Still, this doesn't look like our spot. The visibility is just too poor, and this detritus could have come from anyone. There's no way to prove who was here, or why, or how long ago. And the radio tower is no help. There's no spot up there for a stable firing platform, which you'd absolutely need for that kind of shot. Leave it to Inland Empire to focus on the cigarette brand. Although it does say you paid attention, so that detail jumped out to Harry for some reason. I'd say that's a red herring, but that's what I thought of the lady in front of the bookstore, so who knows. Alright, nothing else up here. Let's head back down and find a way around to that tent. Just hitting tab periodically, making sure I didn't miss any containers. Starting to think that the reeds indicate impassable terrain. It looks like you should be able to go behind the church, but when I click there, yeah, you can see I'm suddenly taking what I thought was the long way around. Looks like we instead have to circle around in front of the church. Heck of a far off place to blast some music. Maybe they're just trying to stay out of downtown. There's someone. Let's talk. Well, let's do our usual look around and then talk thing. Weird place for a party, or whatever is going on here. Someone's home away from home. Hobo cop, meet hobo rave. Might as well push this down while I'm here. Interfacing isn't impressed with the workmanship. I think we may have found our quote-unquote locksmiths. There is a method to my madness. And if you think it's just my OCD calling the shots, well, okay, yeah, that's probably fair. Hey there, kid. Cue the expression. Oh, hello there. Kid should have a hat or something. Electrochemistry thinks we share a hobby. So should you. She's looking right at me, but not really paying attention. Oh, I didn't notice that. Yeah, well... Look, man, fuck that. This is a very dad conversation to start with. 
I'm sorry I said fuck that. I was concentrating on something else. My whole family swears and it rubbed off on me. Alright, well, she can see we're not going away, so let's do the rundown. Well, we found a girl that dyes her hair. That's progress, right? I'm thinking being all official-like is not going to be much help here. Let's keep it cool. No sign of Ruby out this way, either. Running out of places to look here. She's got to be somewhere. A cell's just out here recording something. Encyclopedia hears Contact Mike as a microphone and spits out a tidbit that there was a boxer named Contact Mike. That's very helpful, thank you. You know, my mind does that a lot and it's the most annoying thing. Some word association misfire will cough up some bit of trivia and I'll be thinking about it for like three hours later when I'm trying to sleep or something. Anyway, the mic, as the name implies, requires physical contact and she seems to be using it to record what ice sounds like. Now she's going on about some music club slash workshop and jam rock and that's the first bit of energy we've seen from her yet. I don't think these are just partiers. I think we've got some amateur musicians on our hands. Reaction Speed remembers our old buddies, Fuck the World and the other guy, happened to mention Arno Van Egg. Having a real, how are you fellow teens moment here. Come on kid, work with me here. I did not rack up a 130 real damage bill at the Whirling just for someone to imply that I'm not cool. Ah, who am I kidding? I'm old and life sucks now. What were we even talking about? Oh right, the mic. Nah, we're done with that. Thanks. Next topic. So she is recording the sounds of ice. Do they need sound effects or something? She can't tell what it sounds like without headphones, which appear to be missing. Boyfriend sold them. For stuff you need for life. And drama fails me, so... Seems legit. Anyway, she says the Polisium musicians use various sound effects to make their stuff. Kind of a proto-techno thing from the sound of it. That's basically what she's trying to do, but it sounds like it's not working out very well. Empathy picks up on disappointment. Uselessness. Her recording device feels like just another fantasy. That, coupled with the high starting to wear off, means she's having a hard crash into reality. Kim tries to help, offers his jacket. She's trying to pretend everything's okay. It's a hell of a thing to watch someone's dream die in real time. She really should at least have a hat out here, but I was worried this might give her the hat I was currently wearing. I wanted to switch first, so we hold on to that thought for now. So it looks like the guys she's with are trying to set up some kind of club on their own. She's not feeling it, and it begs the question of why she's out here and they're in the tent. Too much crammed in there. So she's out here freezing her ass off for a dream she's given up on. There's an empathy check about the tape recorder, pretty much a coin flip. Let's see if we can do something about those odds. I doubt the Dick Mullen hat would help much, but this orange cap here is probably a better fit, and certainly warmer. Alright, now where was that option? Eh, gotta be somewhere in here. Pardon me while I click through things. Aha, here we go. Now I can be generous. Yeah, I thought so. Not parting with my detective hat that easily. So yeah, they're trying to make something called anodic dance music. For some reason, these kids got the idea to set up shop in a church, probably because it's been sitting abandoned for so long. There appears to be a kink in the plan, however. And 
that, of course, is where we come in. There's some weird goings on with the church, separate from whatever these kids are doing. This might not be relevant to the case, but we need to check it out anyway, if only to cross it off our list of hiding places. I ask her point blank about the padlock. She says she didn't do it, which rhetoric sees as a simple dodge. One of her friends must have. So her friend, this Noid, locked the church up, and from the sound of it, there's someone squatting in that building that's got them nervous. Exactly the situation that would be improved by police involvement. Yeah, we're basically seeing the creation of techno. Mid to late 70s, early 80s electronic stuff like Kraftwerk and its derivatives that helped shape the post-disco era. Some of them even had tentative roots in disco, since that whole decade was just steeped in that aesthetic. Just bumping my odds up a bit here. This'll do. Much better. Let's do this. Her tape recorder's still warm. Still rolling. She's just sitting out here in the cold, the good feelings fading away and just waiting for the sun to set. I'm sorry. The people who built this world intended for it to be better for you, but they failed. It's easier to live in their failure with this by your side. It's not a childish fantasy. It can be a real weapon against what's coming for you now. What is? Nothing. If you've got this, don't be scared. Suggestion can tell something has changed. We look more human to her than we did a minute ago. It's the little things that can keep us going when everything seems darkest. She offers to play therapist for us now. Oof. How much time you got, kiddo? I, I want to focus on this. Pay very close attention to this exchange. All these options are political, and there's no neutral option this time. Harry, as I play him, has been leaning moralist, so that's where I go. Now, I can lean further into that, but here's where it gets interesting. We ultimately pick this middle option. Check issues. A cell sees right through us, and that potentially recontextualizes every political dialogue option in this game. It's not that people in the world don't genuinely believe in communism or fascism, but what if Harry doesn't, even the way you play him? What if his politics is because he feels lost after his divorce and self-destruction, and it's something to devote his energy to so he doesn't have to face the pain in his life? And maybe I'm reading too much into that, who knows, but it's something to think about. Our beliefs are often more malleable and, dare I say, more flexible than we're willing to admit. Back on topic, she's a bit too familiar with this. Logic knows that amnesia takes more than just booze. She's pretty perceptive, though, and there's a lot of truth in what she says. Sometimes the best you can do is just to not look back, or at least not so often. Thanks, Asel. Sit tight. I'm gonna check on your friend and see what's going on with that church. An elegant setup for the future of music. Come on! Get in and close the flap behind you. The warm stuff's getting out. Sorry, we barely have room for one. You go ahead. I'm too old for this. I'm sure you will feel right at home. I'll keep watch. Deep breaths, Kim. I'll handle this. Right. Hello, fellow delinquents. So, who wants to talk to the police? Yay, level up. I wanted to confirm I've got another point on deck. Probably a good idea to hold that until I know what these guys want. Nasal sprays and ravers, there's a combo. Alright, uh, let's start with you. What's your story, guy whose portrait makes him look like he's got elf ears? Hardcore! Is it? Is it really? It's hardcore! 
skibber dee skibber danger i am the rearranger right you keep on doing that i'm gonna look for someone that can like use actual words and convey information yeah apparently it's a minor dialogue puzzle before he'll actually talk to you i'll sort that out later let's stay focused here how about you buddy you speak human please say yes hello i'm andre it's a pleasure to meet you there's a better start nice to meet you andre this is my posse Noid. and egghead egg charm truly together with a little burger who's out there right now doing some seriously progressive sonic experimentation we like to think of ourselves as music venue organizers we have many in the pipeline officer you see we've been all over jamrock north prospecting for real estate to establish a new venue in all the sort of talent yeah thank you egghead and while there is no shortage of raw unfettered talent spinning tapes in jamrock we've had rotten luck with the real estate part place is a shithole I, I apologize for my friend noise potty mouth i realize this is not how you speak to a police officer I he has authority issues Ah, oh, so you've met her. Good, good. Empathy picks up on concern. Yeah, it's a matter of occupying ecclesiastical property. I bet you've noticed the derelict hive of Narcomania on the coast. Volition can see he's trying a little too hard to sound proper. I'm talking about the church, and I'm not exaggerating. Even a place of spiritual refuge can become a magnet for all sorts of dope heads and burnouts if left unattended. Dope heads! Burnouts! Well, I'm sad to say, that's exactly what happened. Sad because we were just about to put Martin Ace on the map with one of the maddest dance clubs in Jamrock. Nah, uh, strike that, in Revachon. Strike that, the world! And sad yet, because the dope heads and burnouts hold up in there with the worst kind. I highlighted that empathy check for a reason. What's the angle? What's he trying to get us to do here? Okay, Andre, you started off on the right foot, but you're not the first guy to ask me to run people off for a community center. I didn't wake up from a hangover yesterday, you know. It was three days ago. Look, I have my doubts, but I need to get inside and they installed the door lock, so... Sure, whatever. Alright, boys, I'm gonna need some details. What exactly are we dealing with here? Wait, wait, wait. You haven't even seen them, and you want the cops on this. What kind of delinquents are you? Okay, now we're getting somewhere. He scoped the place out a month ago, and it was basically empty. They came back two weeks later, and someone had set up a bunch of machines inside. Wires are running into bowls of water for some reason, which sounds like a serious electrical hazard. I know Estelle said she hadn't seen Ruby, but that is a little suspicious. Egghead calls attention to something else. Some strange feeling of silence. Empathy thinks it was no ordinary feeling, even for him. Some woman has been going in and out, and they think someone else is inside, but haven't seen them. I ask if it was a certain redhead truck driver, and they can't seem to agree. Volition says they're not reliable witnesses. We'll have to get inside. This other person, or thing they call him, seems to be what's really freaking them out. A uh, crab man climbing the ceiling. That, that's what we're dealing with today, a crab man. Yeah, that is very uncrab-like behavior, and unmanlike behavior, frankly. Look, I've, I've met Estelle, she's a nice girl, but are you sure you weren't all on drugs when this happened? She's high right now. You will see some fucking crab men when you're high. Oh, we'll proceed with caution, but not because of any crab man. Come on now. Yeah, logic gets it. Sure, we're looking for a mutant stick bug, but this is a bridge too far. All this talk of burnouts and dope heads is just jumping to conclusions. Rhetoric isn't impressed. Okay, I'm calling it now. This is projection because they're on drugs and have no idea what they're dealing with. 
So Egghead's their MC, and he just gets really into his music. And I gotta say, he's been pumping that tape layer ever since I walked in. Dude's got upper arm strength, that's harder than it looks. Hold up like a stapler or something and see how long you can keep it up. Yeah, basically we have to navigate his dialogue until we find the thing that lets us really talk to him. Ah, an opportunity to mask our ignorance. Thank you, Rhetoric, I will do exactly that. So the church belongs to the Ecclesiastes, a major religious organization, sort of this world's version of the Catholic Church. So, obviously, their abandoned church is the perfect place to set up a dance club. I mean, I'll give him credit, he's not even flinching at the thought. Egghead sure seemed on board. I'm coming around on these guys. They're kinda dumb, but they mean well. Physical instruments starting to feel it. Nice. <laughs> His head's actually nodding to the beat. That's cute. And you know what? Playing as someone still suffering from heartbreak? Love can be hardcore. Maybe this is just some desperate attempt to seem cool, but... Fuck it. I think I see what you're getting at here. Thank you, Empathy. I was puzzling over that. Still bobbing his head, I love that. Necktie is enthusiastic. We are gonna need a place to party once we crack this case. Yeah, I think we have to do this. There's been a woeful lack of disco in this game, and this'll be the next best thing. But first, we're gonna need that key. Noid installed the lock, mostly to make sure nobody else gets in. Now, I'm a little worried. He might have just locked some homeless guy in there. He says it's only been a week, but that's a while if you can't actually leave the building. Yeah, Encyclopedia helps us with the definition of involuntary manslaughter, which hopefully will not be the case here. All the more reason to settle this before these kids do anything else dangerous. Right, let's see that key. No oh, shit, reaction speed check. Time to look cool. Yes! Life's little moments. Fuck yeah, I'm the best at looking like I don't care, but I secretly care a lot. So anyway, what's with all this other stuff in here, the stuff not involved in music production? Now, at first, this list looks reasonable. Obviously, you'd want water if you're camped out for a while. The Nosaved nasal sprays are a little more conspicuous. We touched on this before, but there appears to be a lot of them for just these guys. Well, them in a cell outside. Then there's the smell. Three bodies packed in a tent is going to cause issues, but it's not just sweat in here. We're picking up the scent of ether and something that smells like laundry detergent. Obocop sense tingling. I mean, it was a pretty safe assumption these guys were doing some drug stuff, although they don't seem to be currently doing anything, at least not obviously so. Could just be habitual users, could be doing something else. We need to dig a little. A logic option pops up, not an easy check. Note the modifiers. Let's see if I can tilt those odds a little. Oh, drama's checking in. He's finding us a little boring lately. Come on, just because I dress all in brown and help with science projects and have long talks about history with strangers? Well, okay, when you put it that way, yeah, I guess I am a little boring. <laughs> uh, I like to think I walk the line between dull and eccentric, personally. Anywho, let's give us a bump in logic. We'll hold the other point for now. And once that's done... Let's see if I'm carrying anything that can help. No, no, no. No, that's minus logic. Gotta be something here. Oh joy, the straw hat. Yeah, look, it's not racist. I'm just appropriating their culture for a stat bonus. That's different. Hi again. 
So, uh, how are things going? Can't argue with results. Let's roll. All right, Andre, I know you're inclined to hide stuff from the cops, but what if you didn't? Yeah, starting to think these guys sobered up just for me. It's not like I've been discreet out here. Empathy picks up some anger, which is weird coming from him. A cell gave the game away, and he knows it. Don't test me, son. I've done more drugs than Keith Richards. I know what a poorly hidden drug lab looks like. Yeah, Perception sees they have a speaker. Not the most promising start for a dance club. Dude, you've got a cell out there recording ice with no headphones. What are you gonna do? Imagine what it sounds like? I'm sure they can explain away some of this, sure, the water is innocent enough. But would you like to just admit you tried to use a cop to set up a drug lab? Or would it be easier if I said it for you? There we go, we got him on the ropes. The suggestion says now we play it cool. Make it clear that just because we're not buying it doesn't mean we're here to ruin the vibe. So they say they're sincere about turning the church into a club. I'm fine with that. But speed is where they start losing me. They claim it's to cover startup costs. They'll forgive me if I retain my skepticism. They are genuinely afraid of whoever's inside the church, but also more so of them calling the cops if they started making drugs there. Alright, I'm not cracking down on these guys. I'm with them with the club idea, and I'm checking the place out anyway. But no speed lab, come on, man. Yeah, see, Egghead gets it, come on. Don't think of it as lost revenue, think of it as a challenge. Higher difficulty builds character. Egg's weirdly passionate about this. He seems to really believe in this club thing. It really, I get the feeling he's high enough on himself. Yeah, I think we've gotten the point across. There's a difference between Rosemary selling whatever he can get his hands on, and a team of guys actually making the stuff. Besides, a lab might actually get the Hardy's attention, which nobody wants right now. Now that we've nipped this problem in the bud, let me talk to Noid real quick and then we'll head out. Straw Hat, thank you very much. Your logic bonus will no longer be required. So you had a talk with Andre, and now you want to discuss things with Noid? Good. It's good you talked to Andre first. Gave me time to get a reading on your side. Can't really talk to people before you get a reading. Noid's kind of halfway between Andre and Egghead, it seems. Big on personal vibes between people, but at least it's not a dialogue puzzle to ask some basic questions. He seems to be our carpenter, the guy that installed the lock and built the bridge. You actually saw him playing with various tools and stuff during the conversation with Andre. Apparently there's some weird deep meaning behind the smiley face sticker, about how humanity has conquered history but is also stuck in its wake or something. You're gonna be honest, I'm not getting that from smiley face dead guy. He knows a bit more about machines though, and the setup in the church rubs them the wrong way. Again, he brings up wires going into water, which makes very little sense. He thinks it's either some spy stuff or some kind of weird science experiment. While little in this game has given us reason to believe in the supernatural, it does sound strange. We'll want to be careful going in. Let's see if Acel has anything else to say. See what you can tell us about this alleged crab man. So you talked to my associates, right? Are you going to help us? With the church, I mean. Great. Let us know if there's any progress, will ya? We've been waiting for weeks here. Don't worry, we'll sort this out. But I got a couple questions for you first. Yeah, Kim called it. These kids are up to no good. Also, I'm glad he wasn't there for the straw hat thing. I think he would have had some opinions on that. 
Nah, we're cool. Acel's good people, and as she says, you don't always get to choose your crew. Just don't set up the lab and we're good. I ask about the church, and Rhetoric can tell she doesn't just blurt out what she saw to everyone. So she saw the woman they were talking about standing next to the computer. By itself, not too weird, but then a man crawled down the wall behind her. Somehow she thinks that's like a crab, but the weird thing is how silent it was. She didn't move, he didn't make a noise, but he did look right at her. Well, that's hardly evidence of some previously undiscovered crab being, let's be fair. If an otherwise normal person did that, it would nonetheless be rather intimidating. Yeah, I think she saw the dude climbing down, freaked out, and her mind colored in the blanks. Seems a little too specific to be completely made up. I'll pick her brains more next time. We're coming up on the end of the video. Just want to take care of Morel's last trap back at his camp and park us at the church. Getting late in the day, and we're actually not far from where we're supposed to meet the pigs and get our gun back. So maybe the next set will advance time enough for that. God only knows how that's gonna go. That's the mural I mentioned way back at the start, with a shivers check. I'll poke it real quick after the trap. Mr. Phasmid, his fourth time a charm? Shivers gives us a strange feeling, like some arbitrary flag has been checked somewhere. Oh ho, what do we have here? It's empty. No Phasmid, but something took the bait. Obviously, not necessarily our reed camouflage stick creature. Perception even notes the netting is a little messed up, and theorizes that someone might have picked it up and shaken it out. Regardless, we should tell him. He'll be back in the whirling by now. Yeah, see, now Shivers is explicitly pointing to the Feld building. I haven't put a single point into the skill, so I feel like the game's kind of steering me towards it. Pardon me, man still out here with his son at 7.30 at night. Yeah, the check is listed as impossible, but we've picked up some major bonuses from side quests in the area. The implication is, as we learn about the place, get a feel for the peninsula, we start to intuit where Ruby might be hiding. I don't know that it's the only way to find her, but it's starting to feel like it, unless someone in the church knows. But anyway, that about wraps it up. Next time we'll get into this church business, and I feel like that's going to take the majority of the episode. We'll see where that goes. There's still some stuff to puzzle out with the Ravers, got to figure out what to do with Kuno, report back on the traps, and, as I said, meet the pigs for our gun. But that'll do it for tonight. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. I'll see you next time.